back to the Savage Nation. In a few moments, we're going to speak with uh, David Broom, executive producer of The Day I Met El Chapo, the Kate Del Castillo story. I just want to, you know, get started in the right way here. I've always been fascinated by crime. I've been fascinated by criminal kingpins ever since I've been a child. And the more I studied crime and criminals, uh, the more I realized that the great leaders of the world are not too far apart from the great criminals of the world. They're just smarter. And while criminals have uh, armies of gangs, uh, leaders have, have armies. In other words, a criminal leader will have an army of hitmen. A president will have a military. In that sense, they're one and the same. And then when my mind took me back to biblical days, and I read about King David, and I realized that King David became the king of all Israel by killing all the other tribal leaders, I said, you know what, King David was in many ways like a narco-terrorist of his day without the drugs. The ruthlessness, the bloodthirstiness, the quest for power. So when I saw that Netflix had a show coming up, on El Chapo, I said, wow. And then I'm reading all of this stuff going on that was just coming out today on this story. And I said, I, w I hope we can get David Broom, the veteran TV producer, who was being attacked viciously by Sean Penn, who was trying to stop his Netflix, Netflix documentary The Day I Met El Chapo. So uh, that's the background. And now the foreground, David Broom, producer. Welcome and thank you for being with us on The Savage Nation. Great to be here with you, Michael. So, David, how is the series playing on Netflix? It started on Friday. Are you getting a lot of viewers? Yeah, you know, the the, the beauty and the frustrating part of uh, Netflix as a producer is uh, you don't know the numbers. We don't live in that numbers world anymore with Netflix. But the oh. that we know uh, with our relationships there, that it is registering, that people are really, really um, finding it. And, um, and the response has been overwhelming, and I'm thrilled for that. So where does your documentary go that has not been gone before? Where do you go with it? Though? In what direction do you go with this documentary? Well, you know, when I first met, I was introduced to Kate, to Kate Del Castillo, in, uh, in September of 2016. And I had only heard about the top line of this crazy story. I mean, it is a mouth-dropping story, uh, stranger than, you know, a, it is truly life-imitating art. And I, I said, uh, you know, I, boy, I never expected to, her story to lead to so many other areas that, um, that we kind of get into in a very deep way in this documentary. We talk about, you know, you're so right, um, just listening to your setup about government and leaders and, and cartels, and there's a gray area here. And we talk about it in Mexico um, in, a, in, a, you know, in a way that I never expected. So I think what the audience is finding is, yes, you know, come for the um, El Chapo, come for the wild story, the incredible Sean Penn, Kate Del Castillo journey deep into the Mexican jungle, but you're also going to stay for the story about corruption, sexism, ma you know, the machismo attitude, you know, the history of all this. You know, how did this all come about? And I think... But, I want, but David, listen, this is a very dangerous subject you're talking about here. When you consider there are armies of dead people with their heads cut off, you, you've done a documentary here as producer. I mean, are you in any, you know, any risk here? No, I, I don't feel like uh, I am. I, I think we've dealt with the subject um, in a, you know, in a, in a truthful way. I think we've dealt with it in a very respectful way when, when you think that we're not trying to be exploitive, we're not looking to, uh, you know, be gossipy, we're trying to be, um, uh, you know, opinionated, and at the same time, you know, get the story that needs to get out. You, yourself, have done an amazing job over your career for freedom of speech and getting stories out that sometimes are tough, and this is one of them. Yeah, it is. Well, so that's what I'm asking you. El Chapo Guzman is now in an American. Where is he in 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 the, in, in Florence? City. I'm sorry. Which prison is he in? In a jail. But where? Um, I don't know. You know, 
I'm not sure um, exactly because there's been a couple of different reports as to where he is, and that stuff is a, a bit uh, secretive. So we know that he is awaiting trial. The trial is supposed to take place in early 2018, first quarter, somewhere around there. And um, and so, you know, he's dealing with uh, his legal issues right now. All right. So the day I met El Chapo, the Kate Del Castillo story, is this about her or is it about him or is it about you? It's not about me at all. Um, it is definitely Kate's story. So, you know, Kate started as this telenovela actress, grew up um, in a, a well-known family in Mexico, and grew up into that system. And, you know, what ended up happening is in 2012, she sends out this tweet, uh, a, a long letter tweet, basically denouncing the Mexican government and her opinion as to the bad things that are happening to the people of Mexico, and in a way propping up El Chapo saying, you know, you can take your power, you could do a better job with your um, power than our own government can. Wait, wait, so she's saying he's like a Robin Hood, even though he killed so many people? Well, you, you know what, Michael, I'll tell you something. She's not saying it necessarily in that, in that statement, but you hit on something that is actually, uh, you know, in the culture. There are, well before um, El Chapo, there's a long history of drug leaders, cartel, uh, the cartels themselves, um, playing that Robin Hood role. Um, you know, El I, I have to interject, David. This is such an interesting conversation for me. When I was in L.A. about a month ago, I was watching, I don't know whose documentary it was, about narco-terrorism. It was in Spanish with English subtitles. I'm sure you must have watched it while making this one. And it showed the the music, the music that was being produced, that they'd hire their own songwriters and singers to glorify their their activities. Uh, um, what is that called when they sing their songs? Uh, uh, they're, they're, um, uh, it, it'll come to me in a second, but that is exactly, I know the documentary, um, it was beautifully shot. Um, it is part of the culture, and and they'll, in that documentary, they went out and were showing some of the concerts. And you're not only you seeing those the, the, those musicians playing that, but you're seeing the entire audience that's there singing these yes hard yeah. I, I I went I was watching this documentary about a subculture here in the United States of America amongst Mexican American young people who go to concerts where the stars, the rock stars, are going around singing the praises of narco terrorists and they're dancing and singing along because they are their robin hoods and their heroes that's right and I'll, let me tell you something michael in this documentary in the in the, in the day i met el chapo we we you'll see some of that here you not necessarily some of the singing but you'll hear comments from the people of mexico who are who prop up um el chapo um for doing better than and helping them out more than their own government is and this is where the the but how does it help them out? Let's be come on. Let's be real here. The people are, people are killed who stand in their way, including innocents. There's a, there's a part in the other documentary about um, I think it was Juarez. What is the American city El Paso, direct across from Juarez? Sinaloa. Yeah, no, but there was an American city on one side of, El, of the border, El Paso. On the other, I believe, was Juarez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Juarez was once a thriving Mexican city, and according to that documentary, the cartels threatened all of the businessmen, extorted all the businessmen, and the city of Juarez became a ghost town. The children hide in their houses. They're afraid to go out because of the murders that are occurring. So, I mean, we have to be a little yeah. cautious in how we glorify how we glorify uh, a wanton murder like this. But some, some of those same people will tell you that that's a, a similar treatment as they're getting from their own government. So, that there is... That that's where it becomes a, a, a very interesting topic, where you're where they're telling you that you know they're they're getting the, treated the same way from their own government as they are from the cartel leaders. And by the way, the cartel leaders are probably in some cases doing a better job to help them out. And how they help the, how do they help them? But David, how do they help them out? Well, the, I mean, it's known that that um, that uh, they um, build infrastructures in these communities. They help give out food. They give out clothing. You know, they 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 spread their money. 
That's the, that's yeah, but that, that's that's like Al Capone giving out turkeys at Thanksgiving. You know, I mean, most of the money does, most of the money doesn't go to the people. But let's focus on your documentary on Netflix because I think that's more interesting to my audience, David. Uh, the lady, the woman, the brave, brave reporter. She's probably one of the bravest, bravest journalists in the world right now, isn't she? Yeah, you know, I think, and and I think one of the one of the really um, proud things that I'm seeing is that kind of a response. You know, it, it's a very interesting time for us right now in a fortuitous way on a tragic situation that you're seeing about in Hollywood and around the other industries as well. In the Harvey Weinstein, you know, women are speaking up. Kate was a, is a is a was somebody who spoke up early in her career. She left a system there. She is very brave, and it's being recognized. And I'm and I'm glad for that because that's a big part of the story. All right, now let's bring up the 400-pound gorilla, Sean Penn. How do you handle that here? I mean, he didn't want this documentary to be made, correct? Yeah, he didn't. You know, I knew it. You know, he. The, the story, as, as some of your listeners may know, is that uh, Kate went down. She, she sent this tweet out. El Chapo responded a couple of years later, about a year and a half later, and lo and behold, she has given the life rights to El Chapo. She's introduced to Sean Penn. They're supposed to go down to Mexico to meet El Chapo and firm everything up, which is a crazy escapade, and I'd even love to ask you if you were given that chance. Let me just stop for one second. If you were given the chance right now to go and meet with El Chapo in the middle of the jungle as a guy who you know who escaped, would you do it as a journalist? Well, first of all, I'm not a journalist. I'm only a talk show host, so I'm, I'm not in that regard okay. trying to find... The talk show. But you're, you're, well, you're asking me would I meet with him? I would. I would, but what story would it be that I'm trying to find out about? You know, I mean, of course I would, because frankly, I think I think that here's the thing I understand. If he were to agree with someone like myself to meet with me, what would he be meeting with me for? He wanted to hurt me, could hurt me without my going there. So it would be he wants to get some story out. So in that sense, you have a protection, because he wants his story told. Am I right? That's what motivated you to do it without fear of being whacked. He, he wanted his story told, and, uh, and, and, and he gave those rights to Kate to do it. Kate uh, brought Sean Penn into the project after Sean expressed interest. And what Sean, what they thought they were going down, or Kate thought she was going down there for, was a meeting deep in the jungle with El Chapo to get everyone to feel comfortable. What ended up right. was Sean, according to Kate, dropped the bomb in the middle of that meeting, and that was that he had prearranged an interview with Rolling Stone magazine to to do something with El Chapo. Kate claims that she never knew that was coming, and there's a big... Oh, oh, oh so he wanted to do his own interview around right. your in, around her interview. That's right. She was. They were just going there to get to talk to him and make everyone feel comfortable so they can say, okay, look, we're going to come back and do the movie. What Kate has said, and this is a story that, you know, is featured in, in this documentary, is Kate said, look, I never knew that he, that, they were, that he was doing anything with Rolling Stone. He brought it up in, in, the, in the middle of a meeting. Which was okay, look, I'm speaking with a, with a very important... Can you stay with us, David? This is a very important interview to me. I hope my listeners are following this. Uh, there's a huge point of contention in this whole subject here, which is that Penn is afraid that he's going to be harmed because he feels that he is afraid that they think he alerted the Department of Justice as to where he was traveling to the secret location in Mexico to interview El Chapo. Now, Penn has strongly denied this through his lawyer, uh, and you are now caught in the middle of all of this, and, and when I come back with David Broom, who is the producer, the executive producer of this very, very important documentary on Netflix, The Day I Met El Chapo, the Kate Del Castillo story, I would like to ask you, David, where do you think this will end with regard to that fear? I'll be right back on The Savage Nation. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. I have very little time left in this hour with producer David Broom on his Netflix documentary, The Day I Met El Chapo. And we haven't gotten into the Sean Penn battle, but I highly recommend that you review the Netflix documentary. David has to leave us. David, welcome back. Any last thoughts? David Broom, line 10. Is he still with us? I see the line is here. I'm here, Michael. David, really are there any, any last thoughts on this particular situation that you'd like to share with my audience? Well, look, I, I, I encourage everyone to watch it. I think there's some 
um, some incredible messaging. So she's an inspirational character, um, uh, Kate, in this. I think it's hitting on lots and lots of um, things that are very relevant um, that's going on in just so many different areas of our society today. So, uh, you know, please check it out. So Sean Penn was not able to stop the documentary in plain English? Well, yeah, he, he was not able to stop it. I think, you know, he was looking to have it changed. I asked him to participate in this. We went to him several times. Um, you know, we never got a response from him. And even though it's Kate's story, I wanted to hear from him. Um, and when we did hear from him, we were uh, just um, uh, very close to our release date. We couldn't have made any changes, nor would we want to have made any changes. But, David, so, uh, Penn is say Sean Penn is saying that this documentary could put his life at risk. He is quoted as saying, blood will be on their hands if this film causes bodily harm, unquote. Do you think this concern is valid? I do not think this concern is valid. This documentary, there is nothing in this documentary that is going to cause Sean Penn or anyone else um, to be in any harm's way. If, if, if he were in any harm's way, and I'm not sure he is at all, um, it, it would only be because of his own actions, nothing that's coming from this documentary. Yeah, well, we can leave it at that because this is a very, very sensitive topic, obviously, and we don't want to cross lines. I, I res respect that, David. I don't want any, we, we never want. It's a, we, we have thought about this long and hard, both, you know, not just from a legal standpoint, but a moral and ethical standpoint. And David, I want to say to you, thanks for being with us. I know you have to run along, and I'm sure we'll speak privately about something that's of extreme interest to me that may be of interest to you. And uh, David Broom. Netflix, The Day I Met El Chapo, I highly recommend it. Watch it. This is the Savage Nation. When I come back, all the news, views, and reviews that you have come to expect from the show where God, faith, and reason prevails. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage.